The Great Divide Trail is a nearly 1,200 kilometer long route running from the international boundary in Waterton National Park northwards to Kakwa Lake in the middle of the Canadian Rockies. There are cumbersome logistics involved in completing a GDT traverse, but that shouldn't stop you from enjoying many sections of the trail as day hikes. The 88th mile of the GDT takes in Ball Pass, which can be accessed from the south via the infrequently traveled Hawk Creek. Official parking for this trail is at the Flow Lake Trailhead. Cross to the east side of the highway and enter the trees at a small sign. The area was devastated by wildfire in 2003, but the understory, now relatively free of shade, is a thick tangle of willows, alders, rose bushes, fireweed, deadfall, and young pines. As with all old burns, there are also widowmakers, so travel here at your own risk. The trail is well maintained and easy to follow, though underwhelming initially. For the first 3.5 kilometers, you will need to provide your own entertainment, because the trail is enclosed in regenerating forest. Between three to four kilometers, you start to cross a series of avalanche paths, and the clearings give you views of Hawk Ridge and Hayduke Peak, as well as the sheer ramparts of Isabel Peak walling you in on the north. Open rocky slopes start to give you a reprieve from the forest around the six kilometer mark. One thing I loved about this trail is that the grade is very moderate and never once felt steep. It gains 900 meters, but it does so over nine kilometers, so it feels very gentle. After climbing a short series of switchbacks through unscorched old growth forest, you are finally out of the trees and into marshy meadows crisscrossed with rocky streams. This is a thousand percent grizzly country, and the day I was here there were a number of digs, both recent and old. The strength these bears demonstrate in ripping up trees and tossing boulders is sobering. Make more noise than you think you need to traveling through here. It definitely took a lot of courage to solo this one. Ball Pass was named by Sir James Hector, who was the Palliser Expedition's surgeon. He named this pass and the mighty Mount Ball after John Ball, a 19th century British alpinist and author of the original guidebooks to the Swiss Alps. The remnant scraps of a dying glacier cling to the east face of Isabel Peak. This lonesome rocky pass lies at just over 2,200 meters, and from the top you can see Shadow Lake, Red Earth Creek, Copper Mountain, and of course Mount Ball. I visited this pass on September 12th, and larches were just starting to change color. In another 10 days, this place will look completely different as the mountains swap out their greens for golds. Ball Pass is a lonely place. I don't think it sees many day hikers, and the few travelers that do come here are likely mostly backpackers on their way to or from Egypt or Shadow Lakes. If you don't need to be surrounded by crowds to feel like you're hiking something worthwhile, consider Ball Pass. It's pretty lonely up there though. If you're a soloist like me, you'll absolutely love it.